thank you so much for, for connecting and for joining us. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Of course, man. Like, listen, like you're like a renaissance man. You know, you've done so much, you know, an actor, <laughs> you know, producer. Yeah. You've done soundtracks, you know, lead singer of the Brevet. Fantastic, fantastic band, by the way. You just released a new single relatively a few months ago. And, yep. and now you're doing a new project, a solo, California Gold, which mm-hmm. by itself is, in a way, California Gold. Pun yeah. intended. Thank so, you. Um, Thank you. Eric, man, I don't know when you sleep. Oh, and you have a you know, great marriage. Fantastic. So it's great to have you on the show. We appreciate your time. Thanks. I'm glad to be on the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank it's you so now. much. Man. Yeah. So, so listen, I guess there's a lot to talk about with you. So many sure. wrinkles and you don't want to talk about so much stuff, finish off with, with your new single. But let's start with, um, lately I've been starting with current events. I feel like sure. it's, it's important that we start with current events a little bit because there's just so much going on. Um, how has 2020 been like for you and, 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 for, and for Brittany and your family? Uh, it's, it's been actually, I hate to say it, it's been great. Um, creatively, it's been really, really great uh, for me and for being home. You know, I think for the Brevet, you know, we were touring so much the last two years that I was gone quite a bit for the first, you know, we're, we're married, we've been married for three years now. Um, and I was gone for quite a bit of the first two years of our marriage, you know, all the time, uh, back and forth. So it's been really, really nice for me, uh, to feel like a husband for once, um, in that regard, I do miss touring, do miss playing live, Sure. but really what I love doing is you're probably getting an idea of is, is recording music, is making music. So, uh, it's, you know, it's twofold. Like when you're touring, you love touring and when you're making music, you love making music. So. I, uh, I'm really, really enjoying the season, at least right now, creatively, um, of kind of having some op- doors open up with the California Gold stuff and, um, and just writing a bunch more for the Brevet as well. Sure. It's been sure. great for me and Brittany. It's been great for the Brevet. It's been great for myself individually. That's great. That's great. You, you're making lemonade, I guess, out of the situation, which is fantastic. Yeah, you got it. Got to have a competitive edge, right? Exactly, Eric. That's awesome. Um, so, obviously you know one more i guess serious question about our social situation in our country and in the world uh, mm-hmm. obviously you know there's a lot going on with you know black lives matter movement and and a lot of like social unrest your grandfather uh, fought your great 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 grandfather fought in the civil war he did, and, yes. and you're a student of history yourself mm-hmm. is there any when you hear people say man we haven't been this divided since the civil war i'm just curious from someone who has some weight like you do, if that is like an exaggeration or if you see any truth to that? You know, it's, that's a hard question to answer. I I definitely feel like there's a lot of unrest, a lot of um, issues that of course are being brought to light. And of course there's things that as Americans we can do better. Um, Of course, there's always things we can improve upon. That's why we live in this country, right? And, it's tough for me to tell, you know, obviously I didn't live during the civil war, so I don't know. All I know is reading history books, but I feel like nowadays, and this is one person's perspective, but I feel like nowadays it's hard to find what is facts and what's truly going on from what is being represented in social media. Yeah. There's just so much information out there and it's, you can find any, like any rabbit hole you can go down and find an opinion to agree with what you want to it is yeah. you can find it so you know it, it's i think it's a very bizarre time we live in right now um of that you know like where we have the most we're, we're most accessible to information to learning you don't even need a college degree you go to youtube and learn whatever skill you want at the same time there's so much information flowing out there half of what is right half is what is wrong half is what's not true it's just made up things it's hard to, it's hard to decipher when it's a political issue or a um, world issue or a whatever, you know, it's a very, very hard time. It's true. It's too much. It's too much. I agree with you. Well, well, thank you for your perspective on that. Sure. You know, enough with the serious stuff. Let's get to your early life a little bit. Um, your dad was an artist, right? He, he was successful. Yeah you, yeah. you, you did your research. I like it. No, Eric, you know, I mean, yeah. your life is fascinating. Um, your family was creative, basically, but tell us a little bit about your childhood, right? Like, uh, you grew up, I guess, in, in California. Tell us yes. about, about your, you know, how you grew up. Yeah, I grew up, uh, 
I had a great childhood, you know. Um, like you said, my dad is an artist. He still is an artist. Um, plein air painting and, and like, so I grew up watching him, you know, do portraits, do oil paintings, do pastels, watercolors. So it was just kind of, from my perspective, a normal, normal thing, you know. It wasn't yeah. necessarily um, anything like, oh my God, your dad's, a, your dad's a painter or he's this, you know. Uh, just it's just part of kind of who I am, part of who I what watched him, you know, um, be creative in his own way. Um, so I think that always kind of translated through, especially to me. Um, I know my I have two other brothers as well, and I know it's translated in, in their own ways as well. Sure. Um, so that's kind of where at least where I started dabbling in creativity and whatnot uh, at a young age is like trying to paint like my dad or draw like my dad or just do creative outlet things in that regard. Um, and then from there, you know, like growing up in a, in a city like Orange County, mm-hmm. I think right around like high school, there's, it's such an affluent area. Um, a lot of great music comes out of here. A lot of great bands come out of here. Yeah. So you're kind of, um, it's just like the thing that you talk about, I guess. Like when I was, I remember being in middle school and like the next big band, I, I think at the time, like, you know, post-punk kind of hardcore screamo was coming out right around when I was in middle school and Orange County was like a big breeding ground for that. There's a lot of bands. Thrice was one oh, yeah. of them. Oh yeah, sure. So like when you're growing up and there's these guys from your own hometown, you know, that are in bands that are on the cutting edge of what the music is at that time. And the fashion. Uh, I remember back then, like, you know, the, 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 the skateboards hot, 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 and the, oh, and yeah, the, the black you. t-shirts that you guys were putting the, the fashion for the world a little bit too. Orange County was, was pretty big into the music. And I didn't think about that, I guess, the fashion at the time for what people were, were wearing, at least kids and, and uh, high schoolers, you know? Yeah. So just like having that around you at all times, I think drew me into music. You know, being like, oh, my God, these guys are from my hometown. This is cool. That's but, cool. Uh, you know, so I think, like, naturally, you kind of, if you had any c- creativity, you jump into doing music and playing music and learning an instrument and definitely heavily influenced by what our hometown was, um, what was big at our, in our hometown. And then you saw it in, like, the world nationally. Yeah. Big, music scene-wise. So it was kind of, it was a cool thing growing up in this in the city, for sure. That's awesome, Eric. But one thing that I think that, um, that you have, and, and, and part of you don't have to say it, if you're a modest guy, I'll say it for you, that gives you like that extra wrinkle that is cool, is basically those summers that you worked with your grandfather in the construction company, in the, okay. yeah. in, in the field. I, I think that gave you a little bit of an edge. Um, you want to just touch real quick on, on what that meant for you, like just the value of a dollar and, and, and hard yeah. days work and all definitely, that. Definitely a humbling. Um, when I have kids, don't have kids yet, but when I do, I definitely want to have them find a job like I did in construction. You know, I didn't take that job necessarily to do construction off the bat. You know, my grandfather had pancreatic cancer and I wanted to have lunch with him. And so I started, you know, in the summers doing some construction work and it was like quickly you learned like what $15 at the time I was like, I was killing it. $15 an hour really, really looks like for some hard work. So um that definitely helped i mean it definitely shaped me humbled me quite a bit you know like i did say growing up in orange county there's it is an affluent area so you grow up you know with kids driving porsches in your high school and it's like a normal thing so understanding what work ethic look looks like understanding what a how far a dollar bill can go and what actually 15 dollars an hour looks like changed a little bit of my perspective earlier on i would say you know um as I was progressing into, excuse me, sorry. As I was progressing into high school, God. Um, Don't worry about it. it, it it's, like a, it's like a corona thing. I guess everyone just, it, it makes it more legit. <laughs> right? It's like a tax. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let me turn the notifications off. All right, there we go. Hopefully it'll work. We'll find out in a few seconds. Um, yeah, so it, it definitely progressed me. And then from there, I went to school in the Midwest, actually. So I got out of... Um, Got out of Orange County for a little bit. My dad's actually from um, Nebraska. So he, uh, I, was, I was brainwashed at a very young age to love Nebraska Cornhuskers, the football team. Mm. And uh, my older brother was already going there. So I went there and um, 
and yeah, man, it was, it just, that was another humbling experience and a really, really great experience that I wouldn't change for anything, you know? As yeah, it's like a different, a different America, but equally beautiful. Equally beautiful. What I really learned was like the people, you know, like there's a lot of you're just super humble, humble people, really, yeah. really generous people, really like amazing uh, people, which I'm sure there, of course, there's amazing people in California as well, but you just, it's a different perspective. Like I always call it the California, like handshake a little bit where it's like, yeah, I'd love to help you out, but there's, just, <laughs> you know, there's all, there's a bit of that in Orange County, you know? And yeah. in Nebraska, that was like the biggest culture shock for me. It was like, Hey, do you need a ride? And I'd be like, yeah, but yeah. What, what's how, the cat? How, what's going to come back on me? You know, Amazing. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, no, that's no, you need a ride. Looks like you need a ride. End of transaction. Really interesting. By the way, what are you drinking there for, for, for the audio podcast? I'm just, eating, I just, I'm just eating water, but it's in a protein shaker. I'm uh, okay. I also am a personal trainer. Yes, because I was gonna take. I was gonna say that to my audience. In, in addition to all your talents, you're a certified this Australian like high intensity workout thing. He's one of the best. So yeah, I was just curious, and he looks great. So I was just curious what he's drinking. Yeah, it's, it's just water in there. Nothing fancy. <laughs> Nothing fa it looks like a fancy bottle, doesn't it? Though, but it's just water. That's awesome, Eric. All right. So that's a great Nebraska story. Thanks for sharing that with us. Of course. You, you mentioned a little bit seventh grade and, and middle school. Um, mm -hmm. This is a little bit where your creative union with Michael Jones, uh, who, who you founded the Brevet, started with, right? Um, I'm just curious. I know you guys like basically recorded your first CD around this, this time. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. where do you, I, I just want to know some details about this because I think it's fascinating, right? Where do you record this? How much did you sell it for? Like, Michael was like the guy, like at the time, like he had like, like an e-machine com computer or something, I think it was called. And he had like some kind of software to record and we were both learning instruments. Michael was learning piano at the time and I was learning guitar. And ever since I picked up a guitar and I like, got a guitar teacher, the most boring thing to me, which didn't excite me at all was like learning someone else's song. Um, I couldn't get into it. Like just playing, you Compass. know, like, Oh, learn, learn this song. And I'd be like, ah, and I never would do it. And I would just be terrible. Yeah. At it. And so I just started writing my own songs and getting better and better that way which is an interesting way of doing it, I guess, but it just never like got me going like, or excited me, you know, um, in that regard of playing someone else's song. So uh, right off the bat, I started writing my own songs, bringing Michael like, Hey dude, check out this. I know you play piano. Let's, let's jam. And, um, we just kind of started a recording and that's how our relationship really started. Uh, like seventh grade, eighth grade. Yeah, we made like these three songs, which I don't even know if I have anymore, but they're probably god awful. But um, we started selling them at school, like packaging them up. So that could be like a Brevet record store they're releasing, like a couple of years. People will line up, you know. For I hope they never filed those all I burned <laughs> at this point. They were awful. I didn't like figure out how to really sing until high school. Mm. So, like, actually, end of high school, like senior year, is when I even started dabbling in that. Um, so they were, they were really, really bad. It was really bad music. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got to start somewhere, but, um, for sure, Eric. All right. So you, you went to, you went on to college and you began scoring films, which I thought was a pretty interesting, um, uh, yeah. side journey you took. You got inspired by people like Thomas Newsman. He, he, of course did Shawshank Redemption, 1917, American Beauty, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but you were also pursuing a little bit of acting, right? Yeah, like it actually started in high school, senior year. I'll just brush over this really quick, but sure. Like I played football, uh, played baseball, played a lot of sports in high school. Um, tore my labrum in my hip from baseball or football. I don't know which one actually did it, but long story short is I couldn't really play football midway through the season, so I had to take an elective. And I took uh, theater in high school. Just thought it'd be an easy A, and so. Um, yeah, so then the theater teacher just took a liking to me and was like, I, I was like, this is gonna be smooth. I'll be able to fly through this class and move on. And um, kept making me audition for all the plays that I didn't want to audition for. And he's like, if you don't audition, you're gonna fail the class. I'm gonna fail you. So it kind of like threatened me in that way or blackmailed me in that way. So I'd audition for his plays or his musicals. And then he'd like give me the lead role. And, like, so the this our in our high school had these crazy big budget musicals, so um, like Miss Saigon was the first uh, play <laughs> wow. I did, and I had no a idea. Big how to responsibility, sing. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea how to sing, so 
from that point, from that point, I got an act or a, a voice coach and started learning, you know, trying to at least get my chops up. And, um, so I didn't look like a fool on stage, really, really fell in love with acting. And, um, so didn't know what I wanted to do after, uh, high school auditioned for a few schools and just decided to go to Nebraska for, for acting. So that's where kind of that whole thing started with the acting and whatnot. Um, really got into film acting and, uh, from there, again, started doing all the scores for these student films. And even just, that's honestly where the brevet hole started in general was uh, started doing the film scores, getting super, super into like certain composers. And I wasn't great at it, but um, it was fun for me as well as acting and whatnot. And then um, amazing. from yeah. there, you know, we're doing all that and started writing, writing original music. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, see, you have so much to talk about. We, 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 have to, we couldn't even talk about Remember Triceratops, Love at Last, and all your work with Alexander Jeffrey. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave that, we'll leave that for, for, for the future, but really, really, really good, uh, fascinating stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Eric, so, okay, so, so, so you started basically um, the Brevet. Um, and I know this is, you've told this story a million times, but it, like for the people that follow me, for my followers, they don't know um, the name of your band, uh, what, what it means. Yeah. So, so uh, apologies. I know this is like your uh, no your must, but it's really interesting. Yeah, you touched upon it. Like, um, great, great, great grandfather was in the Civil War. So earlier on, I was definitely uh, um, interested in history and whatnot. And a brevet, a brevet rank was a military rank that was given usually in the Revolutionary War and heavily in the Civil War. Is a rank out of honor and merit. So when you got that rank, you usually didn't receive pay for what you, the duties you had to do. So for instance, if a general was killed or captured, they could brevet you as a general, breveted general, sec, yeah. take over his responsibilities without necessarily making um, his pay. If that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, we thought it was a cool name at the time, you know, and, and, and it kind of holds true to what we stand as a band. Like we're not just doing this to, of course I want to make a living doing music because I love making music, but we're not doing it to, for money necessarily it's it's for because we love doing it and we have to kind of do that you know there's certain people that just that's what you want to do and that's what you've been meant to do in life that's what we feel like and it comes through it comes through in everything it comes through in your debut battle of the heart really outstanding uh, album mm -hmm. uh, i i like uh, rocks beneath the water i think that's a beautiful track how do you Thanks. eric how do you look at this album seven years after it came out how do you how do you look back on the debut um we have we had no idea what we we're doing. I mean, it was, it's it's been cool, like in the sense of our journey. You know, you always try to like look at another band, and the music industry is so interesting. Where you're like, okay, I want to do what that band's doing, but there's yeah. you're never gonna happen. Like, there's so many different roads to get to where you would like to be as a band. And our road was licensing first. So, um rocks beneath the water and all those songs really like we weren't even playing live shows at the time it was just writing and recording and, and getting spots on television and film which was really really cool and from there then started developing a fan a smaller fan base and then uh, eventually towards so it was a very backwards approach and it's just as i look back on it i just see like you know where we were at as a band it's a very interesting um interesting time and it's funny it's like full circle now we're back not touring writing yeah. and doing exactly what we were doing seven years ago like sure kind of fun for me in a weird way but have you noticed some of the lyrics that you've done throughout the year like in your in your in one of your albums legs that came out 2018 you have this song silver and gold which is by the way a spectacular song it yeah. is a, a jewel of a song um but you have, and you have some lyrics that were a little bit poignant of the future, also in Moving Mountains. It's all about overcoming. It's all about like not letting yourself be stopped. Yeah. And right now it's like, I thought that's a song that could be an anthem for millions of people. Oh, so, yeah. yes. So how do you, have you noticed this in, in your songwriting that you, you know. Yeah, you I definitely have certain themes that I really like enjoy <laughs> writing about. Um, and, and I do try to like take the approach of more broad themes and, as opposed to super, super poignant, like this is what I'm talking about. What I really try to do is have it be interpreted by the listener, however they want to interpret it. Like if I, if I do my job right, they, it means something to them that may mean something totally different to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've always liked writing them that way. I think it's like a fun challenge, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not being so literal, not being super 
literal in the sense I'm talking about my girlfriend and this is what I'm going through. Like, yeah, you know, I want it to be more broad. Like, <laughs> oh man, like you must be talking about a relationship potentially. And I'm going through X, Y, and Z and I relate to this in this way. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather have that, you know, someone be connected in that way as opposed to Eric's talking about his girlfriend. Well, it's amazing. As good as your voice is, your songwriting may be even just better, Eric. Um, mm -hmm. One more question about um, Brevet, and then we'll move to California. Go real quick. You released Roses, new single, uh, about maybe March, February, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm in not. In March. Yeah. In March. So right before the pandemic, uh, you probably haven't yeah. had a chance to play it live that much. But um, it's a really exactly. powerful song, Eric. Um, the lyric, all of my youth, this was my calling. But to tell you the truth, it's like the roses in my garden. Got to grow all these roots, but the ground don't want it. Yeah. I'm just curious. For a great lyric like this. What am I Eric, talking about? Huh? You want to know what I'm talking about? Oh, well, if you want to tell us, sure. I, I was going to ask you if the lyric comes first and then the song, but absolutely, take it away. Oh, yeah. yeah no, usually <laughs> the song comes first. Usually the song comes first, um, and I'll write the lyrics around it. Like, I'll do a bunch of jumbling, mumbling, and something subconscious will come out. But Roses is very much about um, us getting in, you know, the theme of the new record, it's like a lot of these songs, like you're talking about, you, you see that there's a lot of overcoming challenges. This one, uh, for some reason, subconsciously, um, it's a lot about being lost and not appreciating and being grateful for certain things. Like sure. Rose is, is very much, we, we tend to, you know, lose gratitude very quickly. Like the first line is with these eyes, no sunset if they saw one. Or would this mind only show them the sea? Meaning like sunsets are incredible, but when you've seen a lot, they're all the same, right? And you just, we just start with blends in and kind of, um, it's that juxtaposition of that self doubt. You know, I think the, the chorus is all of my youth thought this was my calling. It's you self doubting yourself. You know, I want to grow these roots in music for me, you know, and, 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 but the ground for some reason doesn't want it. You know, it's, it's you mm. self doubting yourself and, not having perspective and being ungrateful for certain opportunities that you've already had. Um, that's mainly what Rose's, the song is about. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm going to have to listen to it again with that perspective. Yeah. Super interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Eric. So let's go to California gold sure. real quick. Uh, it's your new side, pro your new solo side project, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I want to, I, I want to get to, to, to a song that, mm -hmm. I mean, Millions of people see one of the, it's, it's a critically acclaimed show on FX called um, Better Things. It's Pamela Alden's show, and uh, they just had a few months ago they, they aired the, the finale. And in one of the most inspirational parts of, of the final episode, it's a really beautiful show. One of the most amazing songs comes on, and, it, and, it's, and it's yours. It's from California Gold. So tell us about this song. Tell us about how you got it, how, the show, like the reception. Tell us a little bit about the story of the song. Sure, yeah. Um... California Gold has been an interesting thing for me. Um, you know, I was just going to normally just call it my name, you know, but I wanted the opportunity. So California Gold originally, let me just back up for a second. It was a sure. side project was more, again, going back to kind of my roots of a uh, licensing world. Okay. You know, writing songs, how I want to write them. And if they get, they're, I always write in a very cinematic way. And I wanted to kind of find this mellow cinematic way where I can kind of keep things tampered down. I'm not belting like Brevet stuff, but able to kind of still translate that to like a film quality and, and movie quality feel. Mm -hmm. um, but by being big and sweeping yet maintaining a kind of mellower song. Um, yeah. So started writing that and like, I'm just going to write this for, you know, our licensing company for some TV shows and whatnot. Obviously, the songs mean a ton to me, but um, I was like, the, I know these fit. This is what I do, and this is what I do well. And um, I'll pitch it to our licensing guy. He's like, okay, great. Is this going to be a Brevet song? I was like, no. I think this is just going to be me. Mm. Um, here's the demo I have at the time, and it was Staying Close, the song you're talking about. Yeah. And that's the demo version, quote, unquote, is what they actually are using, what is out. Right now. That's the demo version. Wow. It was my, it was my quote unquote demo. See, that goes to show you sometimes this, like, sometimes producing is the worst thing that can happen. This song, Eric, is perfect. Perfect. It's like a next level. I'm telling you, all your, your body of work is fantastic, but this is something special. It's, I appreciate it. Goes to show you. If you would have given it to some producer in Electric Lady in New York, maybe they would have fucked it up. 
Who knows? Very, very, very true. I mean, um, we've never used un- – I will pat ourselves on the back, but we, we haven't found a producer yet that we, we've worked with as the Revit. It's always been us. We've always been a very do-it-yourself band, and California Gold is no different. It's um, – if a song feels right, it stop there. You nice. know? Nice. Um, so that's what I did with, with Stan Close and a few other ones that I'm really excited to release too with, with California Gold. Um, and I also feel like, like I could have put California Gold probably, you know, Stan Close out as the Brevet, as a slow song, but it wouldn't have gotten the attention that it needs. You know, like when you have, band, when you have songs yeah. like Moving Mountains and yeah. these more energetic songs like Locked and Loaded and things like that, okay. oftentimes... And I didn't think about this until after, to be honest. But oftentimes, I feel like people just dismiss the slower songs. Like, well, yeah, I want, let's, but let's hear the, like, let's hear the, the other stuff. Yeah, take me to the hits, yeah. Yeah, and this is kind of a way for me to, like, get people to listen to the slower s- stuff that I write in a way yeah. where it's like, more inviting because it's under a different name and there's not a, there's not a Moving Mountains or a, or a um, Locked and Loaded or, or So Long or anything like that where – they want to hear a more fast paced song. It's like, they understand what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to get out of it. Um, so that's kind of exciting in an interesting way for me to, to dive into these more mellow, slow songs that I want people to hear and give some time to listen to them, you know? That's astonishing, Eric. And listen, we're going over time. You've been so generous with your time, but wanted to ask you something. We have never done this on the show because we're all about like the people's story, like the way we've taught it, like yeah. lessons that we can take. Um, I don't know if you're open to singing this song for us. It would be, or, or at least a verse, or at least a little chorus. Maybe a yeah, little, give uh, a little treat. I'd love, yeah, I'll sing, I'll sing a, a version of uh, of Stand Close for you guys for sure. I, I, I appreciate it. it. I, th- I think people would really get a kick out of that. So thank yeah, you so much. Right. Thank yeah. you, man. Appreciate it, dude. Yeah, hold on. Let me uh, get this guy going. This is Stand Close by um, California Gold. It's on Spotify already, on Apple Music, on YouTube, and wherever you consume your music. Think back too. This is the first, this is like the crappiest acoustic guitar. Uh, maybe a $50 acoustic guitar that was my very first acoustic guitar, and that's what was recorded on Stand Close. And I haven't changed these strings for probably five years. And I love how it sounds all the time. I don't know why, but it's just mm-hmm. had back to it you know that's where i write most of my music on this 50 dollar guitar when i have there you go 10 times more expensive you know? that's awesome uh, I'll play some. Stand close, I will protect you Through smoke and the fire is near Stand here, I'll carry you through To the waters when the floods appear So stand close Always be
Wow. Eric, I have two pro pronostications for you. We're, we're out of time and then I'll let you go. But when they come back, I'm sorry, when these pronostications come true, you need to come back on the show and like do like a special celebration. One of them is going to be nominated for record of the year for the Grammys. That's my first one. Listen, I said it. Okay, I'm calling and I'm throwing it into the universe. And number two, you're going to start finishing every Brevet concert with that song. It's going to be Green Day's time of your life going forward. Are you ready for that? I would, hey, I know the band and myself would be, would be more than happy to play that song. Wow. You are going to have to pretend that you're leaving the stage twice and then come back with that guitar <laughs> and like with that, leave that people song. with tears. Oh, man. That, that, mean, that means a lot to me. Thank you, man. Eric, it's that song, man. You, you got it, dude. But listen, we went over time and we didn't even touch half the stuff, man. What a fascinating guy. What a fascinating talent. Eric, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate Honored, it. Honored, man. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys.